Father, we love you and thank you so very much. Thank you for this day. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for it being you Sunday. Father, we ask that you please help us all to get some truth out of your word today. And Father, uh, please help the Baptist church in Nome. They lost a, a pastor. Father, we're asking that you please take care of that need for them. Help them to find a, a new pastor that you want to be there. And Father, also... We're asking that you help everybody who's dealing with grief according to that loss, Father. And we thank you and trust that you will be the comforter in this. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Today we're talking about don't be jealous. Anybody ever been jealous in this room before? Honestly. Let's all be honest. You ever been jealous? Okay. But we don't need to be jealous. We don't need to be jealous of other people's belongings, of people's affections towards their siblings or loved ones. We don't need to be jealous if someone has a better job than us or achieved an award or has more money or, or, any, or, or looks better than us. We don't need to be jealous of anything, right? Yeah. We need to be a people that is happy for them. We need to be a people... That we thank God for it. Thank you, God, that you helped them get that job that they were praying for. Thank you, Father. I didn't get it, but thank you for blessing them. Right? Amen. Thank you, Father, that that uh, they're smarter than me. <laughs> thank you. They can be a, a great help to you and your kingdom. You know, that's how we need to react. When somebody has something better than you, or is better than you, we need to thank God for it. And then in that process, you won't have room for jealousy, will you? No. Kids, y'all with us? Yeah. If, you're, if your sibling gets a toy that you just wished that you had, you don't need to be mad at them, do you? You need to thank God that they got it, right? And pray that they let you play with it every now and then. <laughs> but there are several things that are attached to jealousy. And envy is one of them. Now that's a painful or resentful awareness of an advantage enjoyed by another. Joined with a desire to possess the same advantage. A feeling of discontentment. So that's really what it is. We all become jealous when we are discontent with what we already have. And you can apply that to anything. I'm jealous because they got that job and I didn't. Or I'm jealous because they got that toy and I didn't. But what do you have? What can you be thankful for? What can you be content about? Right? Instead of being jealous and envious, you need to be thankful. Right? You need to learn to be content. Proverbs 14.30 A sound heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. Anybody ever seen anything rotten before? Uh, yeah. Rotten. Jeremiah, what have you seen rotten? Um, a snake that one of our cats has killed. Blood. Okay, so you've seen it decay. So you've seen a decaying snake, and it's, it probably had a stink to it, didn't it? Did you see any flies or maggots? Yes. Yeah. Rottenness is pretty gross, isn't it? It is. Do you want rottenness inside of you? Yeah. No. But that's exactly what the Bible says. It says envy is rottenness to the bones. I don't want to have any rot in me. I don't want nothing decaying inside of me. James 3.16 For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Isn't that scary? Isn't that scary? That we're envy and self-seeking. See, that's what jealousy and envy are. It's all about self. Well, I'm mad that they got this or that. And it says that confusion and every evil thing is present there within you. 
That was me, baby. <laughs> I don't want envy or jealousy in my life. Do you? No. All right, well, here's the definition of jealousy. Jealous resentment against a rival, a person enjoying success or advantage, etc., or, <clears throat> or against another success or advantage itself. Okay? So I don't want to be jealous. Proverbs 27, 4. Wrath is cruel and anger a torrent, but who is able to stand before jealousy? Ooh. Who is able to stand before jealousy? Meaning it is more powerful than anger and wrath. Well, I might want to make sure I don't have that in my life. Song of Solomon 8.6 Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as death. Jealousy as cruel as the grave. Its flames are flames of fire, a most vehement flame. That means a most powerful, big, blazing flame with inside of you. I don't want to be jealous. So what do we do to fight against jealousy again, kids? Can you remember? Yeah. What? Kids, we need to... Elizabeth, you got one? We need to pray and thank God that they have that over ourselves, right? That will fight against jealousy. Covetousness marked by inordinate desire for wealth or possessions or for another's possessions. So coveting is desiring something that somebody else has. Ooh, they got that new car. I want that new car, right? Ooh, they got that candy. I want that candy. Kids, have you ever saw, saw your brother or sister get a piece of candy and you're like, I want that. I want that candy. I want that toy. That's not fair. I remember growing up and that's how me and my brother were. My brother would get something. I'd be like, man, I wanted that. And I just got ten other things. Man, I wanted the thing he got. That's what's good. Instead of being thankful for the thing that I got, I'm wishing I had what somebody else had. And if you live your life that way, you will never have joy in your life. You will never know how to be content. You have to be thankful for what you already have. Amen. And be thankful for what that other person has. Yeah. And it will keep you from coveting. Psalm 119.36 Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. Instead of being inclined or wanting coveting other people's things. We need to be thankful that we have the Word of the Lord. That we have His testimonies. That we know His will. Luke 12, 15. And He said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. Our life is so much more important than the things that we have, ladies and gentlemen. Children, I want you to learn this lesson early in life that things that we have do not matter. What matters is having a relationship with God. Okay? There used to be a saying back in the day, many of y'all will probably know this, the older generation, keeping up with the Joneses. Have you ever heard that before? Keeping up with the Joneses. Oh, they got that new car. I better go out and get the new car. Woo, I just heard they got a new couch. I better go get a new couch. Does that make any sense? No. Who cares? Who cares? Good for them. I don't need it right now. My car's working fine. My couch is fine. You know, I don't need a new couch right now. When I need a new couch, I'll go get a new couch. But there ain't nothing that makes you have to go get the new car. You know, you know, people still today that, that 
keep it up with the Joneses still is happening. Maybe they don't say it, but it's still happening. Do you know that people just have to have that new iPhone that comes out? <laughs> all right, and if you're one of those people, I'm not trying to pick on you, uh -oh. but I hear it all the time. Oh, that new iPhone 9 is coming out, man. It's got one more new feature oh, that the boy. iPhone 8 didn't have. i got to have that one new feature. <laughs> Whoo! How about you just let that other, let, let the iPhone 8 last for a little while, more than, than you know, nine months, all right? How about the Yeah. <laughs> right? Some of y'all older generations are like, I don't care. I'm just glad to have a phone at all. I'm glad to have a cell phone. Because back in the day, you had to be stuck in one location, right? As long as that cord reached, that's all you got. You know? Your mobile phone was as, as far as that little cord could take you, right? Some of y'all would buy those extra long cords just so you could move to the next room, huh? All right, here's our last scripture. Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Isn't that awesome? Be content with whatever you got. If your mom and dad spent a lot of money on Christmas and they got you a whole bunch of toys but then next Christmas they can't afford to get you all them toys again what you gonna do kids gonna be mad you didn't get as much or are you gonna be thankful for all those other toys that they already got you be thankful you can fill your whole house up with toys but guess what when you turn 13 or 14 you don't really care about toys no more <laughs> Teenagers, y'all play with toys much? It's, it's big four-wheelers and stuff like that now, isn't it? Paintball guns, and video games. Your, your, your thoughts change. And eight and eight keep growing and keep growing. Toys don't matter as much anymore, right? I don't play with toys anymore. That used to be one of my favorite things to do. Legos and G.I. Joes, man. I was all on that. But I don't play with that no more. I still do. Legos well, hey, there you go. <laughs> now, I will with my, my kids. I'll do that. But we don't need to always want and want. Right? Right. Be thankful with the things that you have. Be content. That's what the Lord says. Now, y'all check out this next video. We've invited these babies, puppies, and their respective guardians to take part in what might be the cutest experiment we've ever conducted. Our toddlers and pooches will be put through a series of tests to measure one thing, jealousy. The question is, when it comes to getting jealous, is the highly evolved human brain really all that different than the average dog's brain? Thank you. These kids are enjoying playtime, but now we're asking the mothers to shift their attention away from them. The babies don't seem to mind if mom is on the phone or reading a book. But how do you think they'll react when mom starts to shower attention on this lifelike doll? Baby. Baby. Nice baby. Hi. These babies are now showing clear signs of jealousy. And that's not all. Both of our toddlers are actively showing resentment toward our doll. You don't want the baby? Now some viewers might not be surprised to learn that humans are born to be a little jealous. But could the same be true for our four-legged friends? So adorable. Our two dogs, Ruby and Emma, didn't mind being ignored while their owners were busy playing with their phones and other lifeless objects. And it's so nice to me. But what do you think will happen when their owners start showering attention on what appears to be a new best friend? Say hello to Noodles. Look at this puppy. Wonder what kind of dog this is. It's so cute. 
Oh, Ruby is clearly God. excited to see what her owner is holding. Look at you! When she finds out that it's a new dog, Ruby springs into play mode in an attempt to make a new friend. You are so cute. But watch what happens when her owner picks a favorite. Now that Noodles is getting all the love, Ruby is on high alert, and she's now vying for her owner's attention. And just like with our previous pooch, to Emma, Noodles is no toy. He's the real thing. Almost instantly, Emma goes on the offensive. Although these pups aren't happy, there's a good reason that dogs are wired to get worried when they aren't getting all the attention. One possibility is multiple young competing for parental resources, such as food, care, and affection. Being a little whiny can seriously improve your odds for survival, whether you're born a baby or a puppy. <laughs> Typical example here. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Daddy. Oh, oh Daddy. Oh, goodness. Oh. oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Hello. I'm the green-haired monster. My cousin, the green-eyed monster, cannot be here today. But I represent jealousy. How are y'all doing? Wow, I like that shirt, man. Give me that shirt. I want that shirt. Oh, I like that shirt better. I'm jealous. monster rising up inside of you, you got to rebuke it in the name of Jesus and pray. Pray, Lord, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that. I'm going to thank you that they got it, right? I'm going to be thankful that you're blessing them, right? Instead of being jealous, instead of being envious, instead of being covetous, we're going to be thankful, right? We're going to be content with the things that we have. What do you do when that jealousy monster hits you? Pray. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus right now. I don't want to be jealous of nobody. I don't want to covet anybody's belongings or possessions or anything. I don't want to be envious of anybody. I want to be thankful for them, right? We need to be a people that prays and is thankful for others when they do good or when their successes rise. That's a success for us. 
That's how we need to think of it, right? Let's go ahead and close the prayer. Father, we thank You so very much. Thank You for this day. Thank You for everything You're doing for us. Thank You for reaching down and reaching out to us. Thank You for being with us today. Thank You for the young ones. Father, we thank You for everything You do for us. Help us not to be jealous or envious or covetous. Father, we trust that You will help us in this. In Jesus' holy name, Amen. Amen.